If you're into tech videos on YouTube, I'm sure you've stumbled across videos depicting creamy keyboards like this. I've been a tech guru all my life, but I've always just purchased generic keyboards and never put that much thought into it. That is until recently when I typed on my friend's custom keyboard and experienced that thocky typing for the first time. After typing on my friend's keyboard, I decided it was finally time to design and build my own. For context, I haven't been much of a gamer in recent years like I used to be. Instead of the over-the-top RGB Razer gaming keyboards I used to use, I've been using the popular Keychron K2 for the last couple years. To be brutally honest, this keyboard sucks. Without a wrist rest, this thing hurts to type on after only just a few minutes. More importantly, the keyboard is loud and just not fun to type on. With all of this in mind, I made very conscious decisions in how I designed my board. The first choice I made was the keyboard layout. For the last few years, I've been using 80% keyboard layout. This layout doesn't include that giant number pad or a lot of those keys that you don't use on the right side of the keyboard. Keyboard layout really comes down to personal preference. For me, I just don't like when my keyboard takes up half my desk. I decided to challenge myself for this build, so I'm making the jump down to 65% keyboard layout. Essentially, this just means that the function row is missing. The function keys alone aren't that important. However, this does introduce a challenge of compensating for the lack of a tilde and backtick key since the escape key replaces it on this condensed layout. If you're a software engineer like myself, you probably use the tilde and backtick key quite frequently. It turns out there's a simple workaround for this called the grave escape, which is a simple workaround where you can basically hold down shift or another key to access that tilde or backtick. The next choice I made was a switch type. There's a rabbit hole of information here, so I'll just say that I chose brown switches because they're the switch that I have the most pleasant time typing on. And before you go in my comments saying, red switches are the best, what are you doing? Remember that, one, I don't care about your opinion, and two, I'm building a keyboard for the best typing experience, not the best gaming experience. For this, I found these really cool latte-themed switches that came pre-lubed. The last major decision was the keycaps. I chose a Hitakana keycap set to mock my friend who has a Katakana keycap set. Katakana is pointless on keyboards since the Japanese standard layout uses Hinagata. Some other less significant decisions were using stabilizers to help with the sound and feel of the big keys like the space bar and using foam pads between parts to help dampen the sound. With all of these design choices, here's what the build process looked like. First, I lubed and assembled the stabilizers. I used a tissue to make sure that the lube was spread evenly throughout the stabilizer. After lubing the stabilizers, I put them back together and then started putting them on the PCB board. It wasn't until I put most of the stabilizers on the board that I realized I had assembled the stabilizers incorrectly. Although most tutorials online don't mention this or mention it very briefly, the orientation of the inside piece of the stabilizer matters. As you can see, this is what the stabilizer looked like when I tried moving it, when it was assembled incorrectly. And then this is what it looks like when the pieces are put together correctly. There's a pretty big difference. So I took apart all the stabilizers, uh, reassembled them correctly, and then started putting them back on the board. And here's what it looks like when the stabilizer is on the board. Once all of the stabilizers were installed correctly, I applied the foam onto the board and then set the board aside. Next up was the case itself. The first thing here was installing the daughter board. The daughter board is kind of what connects the PCB and allows it to be plugged into a USB-C cable.
After installing the daughter board, I added a base plate to the bottom of the case and an accent to the back. After that, I brought back the PCB board and made sure that the foam padding was tightened down underneath the palm base plate. Finally, it was time to put the switches on. So this part is very difficult. All you really have to do is make sure you line up the pins of the bottom of the switch uh, into the pins of each of the key slots. Of course, this depends on whether or not you have a hot swappable PCB board. If you don't have the hot swappable board, you'll have to solder the switches onto the board directly. And I didn't trust myself doing that for my first keyboard build, so that's why I went with the hot swappable. One thing you do have to be careful of with the hot swappable is that you don't bend the pins. Luckily, I only did that with one switch here and I had plenty of extras. Next, I did a little bit more assembly with the case, put in another foam pad that helps to dampen the sound. I connected the daughter board to the PCB board and it was finally time to install the PCB board in the case. It was a little tricky to line this up correctly, so it took a few times because I wanted to make sure I got this part just right. Last, but certainly not least, I installed the keycaps. I gotta say, this part was so satisfying after all that hard work before. After the two or three hour build, here's how it turned out. And here's the key cron for reference. At this point, you're probably wondering, is this worth all the hassle? And I would say yes. I think that if you spend majority of your day typing or just in front of a computer, you wanna have a keyboard that sounds how you want it to sound and looks how you want it to look. And you're not gonna get that with a stock RGB or just key cron keyboard really. Also, it's just a really fun experience. You can learn more about the parts that I purchased and why in my blog post linked below. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.